What's up, YouTube? It's Nico77025. I'm back with my new project. Um, it's similar to my last project, the combination lock or pattern lock. Um, in fact, this is a combination slash pattern lock. Uh, same thing. Um, my last lock, I had some issues with it. The combination, as much as it worked, it was just too easy to figure out. I mean, once you got the first three, the f other roll on the last lock, you could just figure out. Well, I decided to uh, increase the lock, and uh, this lock um, is quite a bit different. Um, but same idea, you need to match the pattern. Um, this time I went with a higher possible count. This has over 65,500 combinations and it's actually determined by each block of the 16 being on or off. So you literally have 2 to the 16th power which would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times two times two and all that and that ends up being 65,000 possible combinations um, the door is here um, as you can see is currently opened that is because there is no combination um, set uh, bring it over to this this is my new uh, setting mechanism and I'm gonna do that right now These are all moving in place, and the combination has been set. The combination is this here, which that is on, these four are on, this one is not on, that one is on, 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 and on, and on. So that is the combination that will open this. As you can see, this door has now shut. There's no button to the door. The only way to do it is to activate the combination. Well, one of the problems with doing a combination lock like this is I need to control each individual light. Um, my old system just rotated up and then I pressed enter and picked it. Um, that would not work for this. Um, you could just space these out and put levers on it and all that, but you know, that's going to take up, well, I mean, it, it's not going to take up room versus the whole build but it's not going to look clean like this. Granted, you can uh, you can arrange this way better than what I have. Um, so that led to another project which was to, to build this interactive system. And I have to coordinate um, what color lamp, you know, or color uh, you want to pick and we did that by doing rolls and columns and as you can see I'm gonna do all the columns columns are up and down rows are sideways uh, as you can see that column lights and only one column and one row can be lit at the same time uh, this is my reset button it only resets the interactive panels. It does not reset the entire thing. I have a separate button for that. So that is them working together. Now, if you have a roll and a column lit at the same time, well, it creates a intersection. So you've now targeted it that intersection, which is black. Um, if I switch to a different row, excuse me, different column, it changes the target and it makes each one blink as needed. So they will light if they are on the row unless they are both, unless it's the intersection and then it will blink. Um, I can then go to this panel and hit a green button and it will transfer my target so now that information has been moved there to there if I go up and I press again it has transferred that one so I can transfer all of them over there individually and I can remove them as long as it's targeted with that I can't remove this yellow one until 
I go back down and match this row and column to remove it. As we can see over here, what was it? It was orange, green, yellow, and light blue. Orange, green, yellow, and light blue. Let's do that. Okay, orange, or excuse me, that's yellow. Green, make it orange. I think white was on there. White is on there. Alrighty, got that. White. Let's see, light blue, black, and possibly gray. Light blue. Black. So I think I need. Let me. Uh, looks like gray and green. I don't think that brown's lit. Her. Yeah. Let's just see. And I guess that brown is lit, so... Let me double check. That... That's lit. Brown's lit. So these four... And those two... I think I can't tell if that one's lit or not. That could be a problem. So I think I need to light this gray, this one here up. Let's see. Ah, oh, that's it. So I have matched the pattern, and the door opens. Now this pattern, you know, it could be somewhere in the world or you can do it individually you can have each light you can have you know these four lights in a section you can have these four lights in a section it doesn't matter you could string out this you know it's all in a bundle cable and you can string that out wherever you want you can have you know 16 different rooms and each of them have the light you know on or off um, just you know anywhere you can do it however you want you can have you know rows columns you know whatever um, but anyhow, that's how it works. Um, I can do this here, and this will clear out everything. So that's cleared out all my work. Um, also, there is a way to reset these tumblers, uh, which right now is just here. But you can you can do it all kinds of ways. Um, just for demonstration purposes and you know use uh, I just put it there but as you can see this is similar to my last one where it randomizes first and then after it's randomized you know it gives it time to generate the numbers and generate the outcome then it delays and uh, the tumblers move in place um, instead of actually using a frame um, I went ahead and used a uh, bus transceiver and what it is is these can control which way the signal's going and this one this side here controls it going this way so right now no information is going through at all uh, what we're doing is this sends out the red pulse the redstone signal and it goes and it hits the randomizers first it comes down here and it hits the uh, repeater and it's set to a fairly high delay so it gives times for this doll for the randomizers to you know finish and display and then it activates this which allows the signal to go through and this is just a pulse so then it deactivates and no more information can go through there and each one moves a frame motor to set the tumblers to either on or off we'll get back to that later on um, that 
was all the easy part. The hard part was actually devising this interactive display, you know, getting, you know, the intersections. Um, that took a few different steps. Um, as always, the display is just the output of what's going on, so there's nothing there. Um, the work comes into these buttons. You have four buttons that you can press, but there's actually five levels. Um, and it's a four by four, which is 16, but there's actually a fifth level and a fifth level there. Um, and that's so you can clear it out. And that's what the reset does, is it just pulls off the information and it's not displayed and puts it onto a level that isn't displayed. Uh, also, the reset button here hits a yellow signal, which clears out everything on that side. More on that in a minute. But as you can see, um, when you hit, let me clear this out, when you hit a row, yeah, row, I'm going to do this one here, this is the top one. That was this one, and that signifies turning it into a brown signal. So we now have a brown signal. Everything in this black line, which is the same as this black line, is sent. And it goes in here, and it gets a negative side. So this goes down, and it lights this side, which activates this brown line. This brown line and this brown line, even though they're connected, they're actually different. This is the black brown line, but it's activating the white. So what's happening here, this is a uh, buffer gate, so no information goes that way. It only goes this way. This is actually not necessary. That's just me being doing my redundant steps. Uh, excuse me, that's a uh, pulse former, not a buffer gate. Same thing. It only sends one pulse instead of, you know, sending a continuous signal, but it also keeps it from going. Um, so the brown signal activates, and it is now giving a brown to the white line, which goes along to all the white information, which we'll go back over there. But as this is getting a brown signal, all these other blacks are going and they're looking for brown too and as you can see the brown is now in the black cable and it's activated you know this here but it's also going and it's looking through to find anything else it goes up here and it's going into the back side of this and it's looking for brown so it's activating this brown there's no brown on that one it's activating this brown and this brown and what this does is it negates the previous out so as you can see the brown signal has been activated and that's displayed by this light here which is sending a white light uh, a signal through the white cable and it's activated here but nothing else is on well if I were to hit this one which is a green signal it's going to go through, it's going to turn this on by the same exact time it goes through the black and it's going through. And if we go here, what happens is it goes up here and it looks for a green. Well, it finds a green here. It goes back into this side here, comes out, and it now adds a plus one. So at the same time of turning this one on, it's turning this one off and they will all do that so anytime you turn on a opposite color it forces all others to go off and that way it keeps it to where only that column is activated or excuse me only that row but it's the same exact thing for columns these are my rows and these are my columns um, these were my original designs and as you can see it's quite a bit larger but I was still working it out, but it does the same exact thing. So right now it's yellow, but yellow is not displayed. Remember, yellow is my fifth column 
that doesn't exist and if I hit this one it is activating the blue line this yellow one doesn't exist it did at one time but so blue now gets a plus one and it's activated on the white line but at the same time it has sent a blue signal here subtracting it from the yellow telling the yellow to turn off so this is where we get our information of rows and columns um, these are not displaying here that is done through another process this is just giving the information of rows and columns being lit and it is sending it through the white cable now if we follow the white cable it goes down and around here goes to the back side and it is shared all the way down and all the way up so it is giving us all our conditions to be met our it is giving us all of the information. If I go ahead, let's do it on the top one. So we're going to this one here. So I have now activated brown, this row, and white this column. So brown and white are now active. So this white cable is now sending a uh, signal. I'm going to turn it off because there's a timer pulsing in that's kind of killing my computer with fraps running. But so let's say that was left on. Brown and white. It's going to go and it's going to look for brown and white. Well white not the cable color, but the individual white. As you can see, white is a column, and it's going straight up. So this is all white, this one side. Brown is on a, a row, so it's all these are brown. The next color is green, they're all green red and then black those are the rows and then each column that's all orange this one will be all magenta and all light blue now back to white and brown this is basically determining if the column is on the row is on or both are on. If the column and row are both on, it goes straight to this AND gate and it will send out the signal here, which gets inverted through the inverter and uh, will deactivate the timer, which is creating the pulse. And it is then shot through this cable down here and it goes into this and it gives the color code of that particular light which is light blue and it lights it here which would be flashing because the signal is coming from this AND gate which is being controlled by a timer giving it its pulse that information is sent down to the orange gate but at the same time because the signal is coming from here it's also going into this yellow cable so but that's only for if it's the intersection. If it's not the intersection, I don't care. That information isn't shared with the yellow. So that is how we get the intersection. If it is a row, which would be, yeah, if it's a row, it's brown. So that's this one here. It's getting a brown signal and it's on. And it's saying that white's off. So that determines that the row is lit, but the column's not lit. And it goes in and it says, okay, so we'll send the signal through here. If it's the column's lit, 
but the row is not lit, then it sends through here. Well, those both need to state the same thing, which is just give it a solid light. So that information is sent there. This bundled cable shares it together, so it conforms it to one signal, and it sends it in here. And this is a uh, OR gate, just giving it a direction to go either way, and it gives it a solid light. So I'm going to display that real quick. So right now, this is the condition that's being met, which is stating that that row is active. And it's the column's not active, which is why there's a NOR gate there saying it's not on. So column not on is OK, and row is on. OK, so we got a green signal, or we got a go signal, which is going here and it's going straight through and it's just lighting that and it's doing that for this entire row entire row so they all meet the condition of brown row being on now if I clear it out uh, clear go back now the column column is going to be the next one the row condition is no longer being met, but we're still getting the signal because this column, which is this all the white, the white is being met. So everything on this board is being lit, on this column is being lit, which is this one, stating that the row is off, but the column is on. And it's just going through this time it actually goes down a layer but still the same thing it lights goes this way and this timer is not being affected at all but once we do both these haven't changed because their columns still activate it and their rows are still activated but the intersection is now said hey these conditions these conditions aren't met but they're both on so let's send the signal up here which goes through the timer creates the pulse and is now being diverted up and around and going that way so that is how we get the two or the three determines of the light being on off or pulsing um, so we have set three different conditions for the light and which allows us to do the display this information now the orange is what goes to the actual display so it's giving that information being solid off or on off or flashing so that's all the orange cable does that gives all of it now we need to know when stuff has been targeted and the yellow line is only for the intersection of the two and it goes down here comes out it's that yellow cable there each one of them are going down comes this way all the way here that doesn't need to be there that was just for testing purposes and it goes up and it's putting all that information on all those boards it's going back down and putting all the information on these boards and what this is doing is allowing us to transfer what we know from that board being targeted to pressing a button green green here is to transfer and red is to delete so that's what these colors mean and that is a purple cable yeah purple cable and that's all that's used for 
And so let's get a gray. So let me find gray real quick. I think that's what kind of gray is that? That's light gray. So I need to find light gray. And light gray is this one, I think. So light gray is being targeted. And it's not light gray, it was dark gray. So let me do a dark gray real quick. Dark gray. Gray. All right. So gray is now be targeting it, which is this one here. So this signal has been met. The condition for gray has deactivated both of these redstone torches on these AND gates. Now, if I send a green pulse saying transfer, it's going to bring, green's going through purple, goes up, it goes through the purple line, hops over, this is just a null, so it, it avoids them intersecting and that condition will be met and it will add a plus one to gray here which brings a gray signal to cyan um, on the other hand if I want to remove it and I press red red goes up the purple cable and gray is it's on gray now with the targeting intersection and if it gets red this end is being met and it goes through here which is an OR gate and it turns off so it removes so if I go and hit the green button gray is now on and this is moved to the positive side so this is now lit and as you can see this goes here so everything in the cyan is lit. Um, the cyan cable controls the display and it also controls the uh, signal through the locks to see if they can pass or not. Now if I were to hit the red button remember this is on a positive now if I were to hit the red button, it's going to send the signal to the red one. And it's now gone back to a negative. So it's now removed the gray signal from cyan. Um, this here, there's a yellow one put in every one. And all the yellow is used for is to reset. So no matter what is on or off, if I hit yellow, it's going to subtract everything. So everything is going to get a negative one, which clears the board. And there is no yellow button that you can see, but I have it done as a wireless signal just to go into the purple. And what it's done is it's attached to my reset board. So whenever I hit reset here, it sends a 3010 signal to here which is yellow purple and it just resets it clears the board so now we have you know the signals the correct signals let's say we have the correct signals well they're gonna go through this here which is the cyan they're going through cyan which is the displayed if it's you know correct it's gonna go through and look and it's going to start looking through these AND gates. It's going to go up. It's going to go this way, this way, and this way. It's also going to go this way here. And it's just going to snake around and find everywhere it can go. And did I reset this? Yeah, OK, it is set. So for example, Cyan, this one, the magenta light has to be on, which we can see here. The tumbler or frames have moved up and state for this 
and to go through and create a positive we have to turn this signal on here which is magenta and you take a look there no and is going through and let's go to magenta now this is just targeting on this and I have to transfer it over so now magenta is on this condition for this particular one has been met but at the same time white has to be off and orange has to be off because they're using NOR gates so if I turn white on or orange on it's not gonna work so they have to make sure that so if I turn white on white is now on this AND gate has now shut off here because white is on white is yeah white is on over there when it should be off via the, the combination so they have to control each one this combination is pretty easy but still I mean it's still a one in sixty five thousand you know chance that you're gonna get it but you only have to turn on four lights which is red cyan orange and magenta and we'll do that again real quick I need to turn this one off let's find cyan uh... what is it? magenta, cyan, red and orange. magenta, cyan, red and orange. that's not orange, what is that? oh that's brown. that pattern matches that it opens up um, anyhow I try to keep this one quick uh, I didn't go over a lot of basic stuff but you know this is by far one of my favorite builds um, I've attempted to use this display in a few things I really wanted to build a battleship game but due to the lack of colors you aren't gonna have you know it's just not gonna work um, I can't make a display big enough I'm considering trying to do it with wireless redstone um, wireless redstone gets a little bit laggy also battleship is a hundred by or 10 by 10 which is a hundred I mean that's a lot of work. I mean, that's going to be like here to here just for the display. And you would need to make two. So I'd have to make two of these 10 by 10s and invert them. I don't know. I might end up doing it if I am bored enough. But anyhow, if you like it, like it. Share it with some friends. Nico77025. Thanks for watching, guys.